Welcome to Mbuya Parent School and Kindergarten, situated in Kampala City with modern well-equipped facilities plus extensive playing fields and amenities. Mbuya Parent School believes that a better future lies where children know how to find and create balances in themselves and the world around them. This explains our fusion of academic subjects and co-curricular activities. There are many opportunities presented to them to flourish both in and outside the classroom. I want to become a president when I grow up. Yeah, I want to be a pilot. I will be the best fashion designer. Mbuya Parent School. The sky is our limit. Hello, my dear learners. You're most welcome to this first lesson of electronic learning. Allow me to greet you from wherever you are. That Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Tamari Ibrahim. Uh, teaching primary six social studies and religious education from their parent school. However, today we are going to focus on social studies. To begin with is our topic. Our topic is the people of East Africa and basically we are going to look at ethnic groups in East Africa. The lesson has got some key words, however, the word ethnic is not new. Everybody has ever heard of it from primary five. We are going to just go through the meaning of it and at the end of the lesson, prepare to have learned the following things. One, by the end of the lesson, these targets must be at your fingertips. You must be in position to tell what an ethnic group is. You must also be in a position to tell the different ethnic groups that migrated into East Africa. And the last target is going to be the different, different origins of ethnic groups. Now, let us ask ourselves this question. What is an ethnic group? To begin with, we have our triangle. It has got five sections. That's the first section, the second section, the third section, and the last section. Now, as the topic is the people, we are looking at the people, and when we talk about the people, what comes into your mind? the smallest unit of the, the people, the way they live their setting, they live in a family. That is the smallest unit, the smallest unit. And when you look at a family, we, are, we, we do live in different families. There are those who live in a nuclear family. There are those who live in an extended family. There are those who live in foster families. But all in all, we live in the families. That's the smallest, that's the beginning of the human social setting. From the family, everybody has got what we call a lineage. A lineage is a group of families having the same ancestor. 
the lineage is made up of very many families, and when you combine all the lineages, you come to what we call a clan. A clan is a group of lineages or a group of people with the same totem. When you combine very many clans, you come up with a tribe, a tribe, the group of people speaking the same language. An example, I've got very many families in Uganda, we are very blessed. I've got more than 50 tribes in Uganda. But to mention a few, we have the Baganda, the Batolo, the Banyankore, the Bachiga, and very many others. So it, the tribe comes as a result of combination of very many clans, and then we get a big group of people made up of very many tribes. And that group of people made up of very many tribes is what we call an ethnic group. Now, what is an ethnic group? Under ethnic groups, the key concepts here are a group of people, same origin, speaking related languages. And an ethnic group, a group of people who share the same origin and speak related languages. Or you can use the word similar. When we come to a tribe where these ethnic groups come from, we say it's a large group of people who speak the same language and have the same customs, the same practices. So the question stands, what's the difference between an ethnic group and a tribe? Don't forget the key concepts there. In an ethnic group, people speak related languages, but under tribe, people speak the same language. I think now it is solved. For the targets we set, I think number one is done, an ethnic group. We go to the characteristics of an ethnic group. What makes up an ethnic group? One, an ethnic group, as we said in the definition, it has the same origin. They migrate from the same point. Two, an ethnic group, people do the same economic activities. The same economic activities, we can talk about the farming, can talk about the cattle keeping. So under an ethnic group, people carry out similar economic activities. Third, people of the same ethnic group speak related languages. Borrowing the knowledge from the definition, we said a large group of people having the same origin and they speak related languages. Under the characteristic number four, they have the same social and political organization. When we say social and political organization, we mean socially the way these people live, how they relate with other people. Talk about the way they conduct marriage ceremonies, the way they bury, the way they eat, that's all about the social setting. Political organization, here we mean things to do with leadership, with the ruling. When you look at these ethnic groups, like the way we are going to see them, some have the same way of ruling, the same way of organizing the social activities. Next point, we have the major ethnic groups in East Africa, and that's our main focus today. Let us list them. I know you have ever covered them in primary five. Number one is Bantu. 
Why Bantu the first? Bantu, the largest ethnic group in East Africa, even in Uganda is the largest. So note that is number one there. Number two, we have the Nilotics. You can call them the Luo people or the Luo speakers. Why? They speak the Luo language. You can call them the River Lake Nilotis. Why? They settled in areas near lakes and rivers. So this ethnic group has got three names. One, the Nilotics. You don't call them the Nilotics, call them the Luo speakers because they speak Luo language. Or you can call them the River Lake Nilotis. Ethnic group three have the plain Nilotis. Plain Nilotis, the way you hear the word plain, they get their name from the area where they settled. They settled in plain areas. That's why they are called the plain Nilotis. Number four, we have the Highland Nilotis. The Highland Nilotis, they get their name from the area where they settled. As you hear the word highland, they settled in highland areas. Number five, you have the Hamites. They have another name. You can call them Kushites in case you don't call them Hamites. So we are, we are going to also look at where they migrated from and where are they currently settling in East Africa. We also have the last ethnic group, the Sudanic people. The way you hear the word is Sudanic. Where they come from? Of course, you can guess it. That is Sudan. Those are the Sudanic people. Where are they currently settling in Uganda or in East Africa? We are going to look at that. Now, after outlining our major ethnic groups in East Africa, I think the second target is covered. I don't know whether we are together there. Let us go to the areas where different ethnic groups migrated from. To come to East Africa, as we have looked at, where did these people come from? To begin with, the largest ethnic group in East Africa are the Bantu. Where did these Bantu come from to come and settle in East Africa? These Bantu came from a place called Cameroon, Highlands. Where are the Cameroon Highlands? We are going to know where the Cameroon Highlands are. Ethnic group two, we have the river lake Nilotis. We call them the Luo speakers. Or you can call them the river lake Nilotis. Where did these people come from? Where did this group migrated from? The river lake Nilotis migrated from an area called Ba'el Ghazal. I repeat, the river Lake Nilotis migrated from Ba'el Ghazal. Different books have it that Ba'el Ghazal. But take it from me. Currently, they used to call it like that, but it's not right. The original homeland of the river Lake Nilotis, call them the Luo speakers or the Nilotics. They came from Ba'el Ghazal. Where is it located? We are coming to that. The third, we have the Plain Nilotis. As we say, they get their name from the area where they settled, and those are the plain areas. They migrated from Ethiopian highlands, from the country called Ethiopia, but in highland areas. The fourth, we have the highland Nilotis. These ones migrated from Ethiopian highlands. They are similar to the plain Nilotis. They have the same origin. That is the Ethiopian highlands. We go to the Hamites or the Kushites, where they migrate from. The Kushites, or the ones we call Hamites, migrated from Ethiopia, 
but the highland and the plain specifically migrated from highland areas of Ethiopia. Now lastly, the Sudanic. Where did these people come from? Where did they come from? We said that these people, they carried a name Sudanic. So they migrated from Sudan. Haven't we finished the last target? The different origins? But let us look at how these people moved and where these origins are found. To begin with, we have this map of Africa having different countries. But we shall come to know a few of our interests. One, the Cameroon Highlands, where the Bantu migrated from. Where are they? They are found in this country. This is Cameroon, the red one. And specifically, this is the area, the one we call Cameroon Highlands. Two, we have the River Lake Nilotis. We say that they migrated from Bahel Ghazal in southern Sudan. And we also said we have the highland Nilotis and the plain Nilotis who migrated from Ethiopian highlands. So, after seeing that the Cameroon highlands, Bahel Ghazal, and Ethiopian highlands were the origins of these ethnic groups we saw up, we can continue. We have the way these people moved to come into East Africa. When you look at this area I'm shading, the area I'm shading is where we find Sudan, meaning that the Sudanic migrated from that shaded area. Yes, they migrated from the shaded area. To continue, we have looked at the origins of these people. Now they started moving into East Africa from Cameroon Highlands, where the Bantu were originally living. They are now coming to this country. This country is called Democratic Republic of Congo. There is a group of the Bantu that came to South, uh, Southern Africa, and another group of the band came into Uganda through the western direction. Another one entered Rwanda and Burundi from the same direction. So these people, all this group that entered East Africa through the western direction, we call them the Western Bantu, because they entered Uganda or East Africa from the Western direction. These ones who entered Burundi and Rwanda, we call them the Central Bantu, because they entered in East Africa centrally. Then, these people who migrated to South Africa, the Bantu, they faced cha some challenges and they were forced now to migrate again. They started moving towards the northern part of Africa and they entered East Africa from southern Tanzania. And the tribe which entered using this route into East Africa, it was the last and it's called Ngoni. The Ngoni people used this route. There are those who also entered using that route. Now, after looking at all that, we have the last ethnic group. This one, we said they migrated from, these are the plain Nilotes. They get their name after settling in the northeastern part of Uganda, known for plains, and the best example of these people 
are the Karimajong. The Karimajong people occupy the current northeastern part of Uganda. We also have the Highland Nilotis who migrated from the same point, covering the Highland areas of Uganda around Mountain Ergon. We also have the River Lake Nilotis who migrated from Bahel Gazelle to Uganda, and then the Kushites, or the ones we call the Hamites, who also migrated from Ethiopia, the normal Ethiopia, via the northeastern part of Kenya into East Africa. We summarize the map using this key. The ones in red are the people who migrated from Cameroon Highlands and they entered into East Africa using those routes. The black have the river lake Nilotis from Bael Gazelle into East Africa. Plain Nilotis in blue. They entered and occupied the plains of northeastern Uganda. And then the highlands, they occupied the island areas. And lastly, the Hamites, they came from Ethiopia and entered East Africa through the northeastern route. Lastly, we can look at this, just the entry points of different ethnic groups in East Africa. The Bantu, when they migrated from, from Cameroon Highlands, as we said, they entered Uganda, and we said these are the Western Bantu, these are the Central Bantu, these are the Southern, the Southern Bantu, who entered East Africa. We also have the River Lake Nilotis, the ones we said they migrated from Bahel Gazal. They entered Uganda, the northern route, and you might find that some of them stretched or went ahead to go to Kenya, and also have the Plain Nilotis, who migrated from Ethiopian highlands. They came and settled in plain areas, we also have the Highland Nilotis who settled around the Highland areas of East Africa from the same origin. We also have the Kushites, the ones we call the Hamites, who migrated from Ethiopia and they entered East Africa from the north eastern route of Kenya. Now, all our targets have been achieved. We can look at the exercise. Question one, what is an ethnic group? Give the difference between a tribe and a group. I know you can recall. And lastly, you're going to match the following ethnic groups to their areas of origin. I think everybody can do that. I want to thank you very much for listening to me as the ministry always emphasizes that this pandemic is very serious. We need to take the precautions. And as I leave the floor, I can demonstrate one of sanitizing Thank you very much for listening to me. Have a blessed day.